Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. A long overdue review today because yes, I'm getting to grips with a Panerai. Now, I did actually do a Panerai um, video a long time ago and I'll discuss in the negatives why I had to take it down. Um, yeah, we'll get to that in a moment. But as this has, un cuore italiano, as this was started its life, the, the brand of course in Italy, where better than to uh, come to the Italian market here in Philadelphia. Oh, and before I forget, you might know this place because if you've seen Rocky, of course, there's that uh, fantastic um, scene where he's jogging through. So no wristwatch check today because I'm actually wearing the piece. Um, yeah, I'm really liking it so far. Of course, far too big for my wrist, but the, these were the original large oversized watches. In fact, actually, let's take a walk around. Prendiamo un po' di gelato, qualcosa per mangiare, and get to know this watch. Okay. So what made him the tough guy? He beat the shit out of a cameraman one time. <laughs> As many of you know, Florence holds a very special place in my heart. I had the good fortune of studying in this amazing city for two years, but most importantly, it's where I met my wife when I was 21. Florence originated as a Roman city thousands of years ago, founded by Julius Caesar no less in 59 BC. Later, after a long period as a flourishing and trading banking medieval commune, it was the birthplace of the Italian Renaissance. Its influence was absolutely massive and quite surprising for a relatively small city. In fact, according to UNESCO, almost a quarter of the Western world's most important art is either from or in Florence. Its dialect became the basis of which the modern Italian language is based on, and its art, literature, architecture and culture would change the world for eternity. But something else also was born there, something that was to become perhaps Italy's most iconic watch. We are of course talking about Panerai. Can I get uh, two of these baby carrots, please? So Giovanni Panerai opened his first watch shop in Florence in 1860. Giovanni's grandson Guido Panerai expanded the watch shop to the Orologeria Svizzera and took over his wife's family business, which was a mechanical workshop, thus founding a new company with the name G. Panerai e Figlio. This new company subsequently earned the distinction of becoming the official supplier of the Regia Marina, the Royal Italian Navy. Over the years, they supplied all kinds of technical equipment and precision instruments, such as underwater depth gauges and compasses. At the time, Panerai watches were almost entirely designed and manufactured by Rolex SA, using pocket watch movements by the Swiss manufacturer Colbert. The main driving force behind the production of the first professional diving watches was interestingly none other than Hans Wilsdorf of Rolex, along with Giuseppe Panerai. To really put it in perspective, one only has to look at the rudimentary early attempts of diving watches of the same era. Rolex's own Oyster case was still very much in its infancy and it would be a further 20 years before the Submariner took its first dive in 1953. Thanks to the development and patenting of their own radiomere luminous material that would later impact the watch world as a whole, the Royal Italian Navy Frogmen were presented with their first radiomere watch in 1936. These were massive 47 mm wristwatches powered by a Rolex hand winding caliber and bright glowing indices that could be read during their daring underwater missions with lives being dependent on these timing devices. 
Okay guys, so uh, if you've been following the channel long enough, you'll know how special this is. Um, probably will kill you if you had this amount of coffee, but there you go. <laughs> Look at that. I wonder if you can actually uh, buy it. What would I wear for a barbecue? Yeah. An RM11. RM11? Okay. <laughs> how did you come to this? How did you come to this realization? I feel like I could sweat in a rubber band and it's just stealth well. Yeah, well that's a very expensive piece, okay. Panerai continued to supply its military diving watches all the way up until the 1970s. What followed was an era of struggle that almost saw the end of the brand, especially following the death of Giuseppe Panerai in 1972. In 1993, the brand launched its products for the civilian market in order to try and survive by diversifying. What followed was its acquisition by the Richemont Group that were able to successfully revitalize Panerai as a luxury watch brand and increase prices. It became a status symbol and its masculine oversized charm, and this was before the trend was a trend of oversized watches, was assisted greatly by the adoption of public figures, celebrities, mainstream sports and movie stars like Stallone, Schwarzenegger and countless others. This bold and manly image was unquestionably founded by its legacy with the Decima Fotilia Mass. This was an elite Italian commando frogman unit of the Regia Marina. The acronym MASS also refers to various light torpedo boats used by the Regia Marina during World War I and World War II. Combat diving is already dangerous in itself, but sitting on a massive armed torpedo and driving it into enemy ships underwater in dark murky conditions is certainly another level of bravery that legends are made of. What is really interesting here is the name Paneristi, adopted by the hardcore Panerai fans, deliberately and rather fittingly mimics the black shirted and skull emblem clad combat divers during the war that fought so vehemently. When it comes to reviewing Panerai, my first choice was the Luminor Due. This is because it features so many classic design traits that distinguish the brand from others and it also includes the newer in-house P1000 caliber. At a modest 42mm, well, modest for Panerai that is, this watch is kept dress watch thin with the movement being manual wind at an elegantly slender 10.5mm in height. The case is directly inspired by the luminal cases of the 1950s, which represents the culmination of the previous Panerai creations used by the Italian Navy in the 30s and 40s. All the elements, shapes, graceful curves and refined lines originate directly from the history of the brand. These have all been subtly redesigned to emphasize the versatility of the watch, ultimately giving, as Panerai so eloquently put, a synthesis of the sporting spirit and the simultaneous ability to wear it for more formal and special occasions. This is of course accentuated by the mirror high polish finish of the 316L stainless steel. It has a subtly curved sapphire glass and a stunningly alluring sunburst effect on the dial underneath. Talking of the dial, it is of course another Panerai hallmark by using layers that is veramente una meraviglia. This time we have a faux patina of the outstandingly responsive luminescence that is sandwiched underneath using cutouts on the top layer for the numerals and markers. It goes without saying that the orientation and low light legibility is top notch with the exaggerated 12, 3 and 6 done in the traditional 1930s Art Deco style font. Tempesta. Tempesta. 
This is from Italy. No, they make the same style like Italy. Uh huh. Uh, maybe but, he, but here. Ah, yeah. oh, nice, nice. What is that? It's made by a by Italian. Hmm. Oh god, that's good. Which, which, in your opinion, is the best one? The best one. So yeah, I'm just gonna end up buying <laughs> pretty much everything. Pistachio olive oil spread. For me, it's like a pistachio nutella. Mm. Pistachio, are you getting this pistachio Nutella? Wow. Oh my God. That's actually better than Nutella. Right? Yeah. Actually, you know what? I'll take a jar. <laughs> oh, guys, guys, I don't wanna. Come on, you gotta try this. The P1000 movement has an impressive power reserve of three days by utilizing two barrels. The movement has the fundamental functions of hours, minutes, and the seconds counter at the nine o'clock. Consisting of 152 components with 21 joules, the P1000 caliber is solid, strong, and reliable, and it is immediately recognizable as a Panerai caliber from both the technical and aesthetic points that is displayed via the C3 flat sapphire case back. To ensure maximum security and stability, the balance is held by a bridge with two supports, fixed by screws with threaded rings for micrometer adjustment of the height. It operates at 28,800 vibrations an hour, features a glucidur metal alloy balance and a kif anti-shock protection. It's sparsely decorated with beveled edges and the occasional pelage finishing, but is mainly brushed. This, I think, matches the watch well and is in keeping with the tool roots of the watch but with only small hints of refinement, the main focus here being on performance, which is of course highly accurate and consistent. It's worthy to point out that Panerai have now been making calibers in-house since 2005, with over a decade of proven reliability. The movement contains a device descended from the historic models, which stops the balance and zeroes the seconds hand when setting the time for perfect synchronization of the watch with a reference time. This is wonderfully assisted by the unique crown guard structure that allows the user to operate a mini lever to quickly pop the crown back in with ease. The operation of the crown is simply a pleasure. It is smooth and satisfying, that is simultaneously precise and very solid feeling. This also has a double feature of letting the wearer know if the crown is secure or not and when the watch is ready for action, as the lever will jut out if the crown is not properly secured. Side note, there's a lot of chefs that wear Panama. In fact, I think Watchbox interviewed Drew the Tomo from Amis, and sure enough, he was wearing a Panama. Uh, I think Wolfgang Park is a big Panama guy as well. So it's interesting how this dive watch has become kind of um, the, the go to de facto chef's watch, especially with Italian food as well. I mean, it makes sense, right? So uh, D.H. Lawrence, Sons and Lovers, three dollars, absolute bargain. <laughs> what else? What else? What else? They got Cl Man in the Iron Mask, classic. Terrible movie, but the book is a classic. Um, three bucks again. Actually, the film adaptation was pretty good. I've never read the uh, the book, so um, of course. Hey, I just realised it's. Uh, it's set in Florence, so nice kind of time. <laughs> Seriously, I just realized that. I'm just gonna pop inside, pay. Perfect. Thank you so much, man. <laughs> well, how long have you been here? Oh man, probably, I think, coming up on 10 years now. It's 10 been, years, wow. Yes, yeah, so it's family owned business. Oh really? So yeah, we've been living here for 
a while. We were close for a little bit, but now uh-huh. in this current setup, I think. Are you are you from Philly? Yeah, I've been here born and cool. raised. Born right. Raised in South Philly, yeah. So why uh, why this particular location? Just been here for forever. Uh, you know, it. Uh, I mean, it gets a lot of foot traffic, but it's not totally. You know, there's still a lot of. Right park here you know people yeah. are still out on the market every day right. working the same it doesn't feel sold out or anything yeah it's, you know, it's still got a bit of that kind of gritty yeah the grit for yeah, sure exactly yeah. and we've been here for so long that it's just like you know this is kind of i mean i literally grew up here so there i don't know right thank you so much <laughs> man <laughs> So I decided to do the positives and negatives in the bookstore. Um, I'm, well, I'm very enchanted by this place. I'm near the art section, so as you can imagine, I'm very, very happy. But anyway, let's try and focus on the Panerai. Um, first of all, I got to say it's it's an enduring design. I I totally get it why it's it's lasted so uh, so long. It's um, has a very macho feel, but yet at the same time, it's quite stylish. It's quite refined. I think it's it, well, it's the d- design uh, product of its day. I mean, the 40s and 50s things were just naturally more stylish and elegant back then and that kind of reminds me the 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 next point it's quite a versatile piece as well Uh, it's dressy and because it's manuwind and they especially with this version they made it thinner it almost wears like a dress watch and then of course with this curvaceous case if you had to you know wear cuffs um, it would work seamlessly. The only thing that lets it down is the size, but we'll discuss that in just a moment. Something you unquestionably feel right away is uh, the strong identity. It's, it's, so, it's very much its own thing. It's so bold. You, you get a feel of that spirit of adventure, and I can't help but think about you know, those, those crazy divers uh, driving those little uh, manned uh, torpedoes into ships and that kind of stuff. So you get that spirit of adventure. The other thing I have to say is it's very um, versatile. It, it's, it's got that elegance, but at the same time, I think I could easily wear this casually, uh, you know, with kind of sports gear and all the rest of it. When it comes to performance, um, it, I love the, the, the crown, the, the special hacking feature that you can actually use it as a very basic, almost like a chronograph, the way the, the little seconds hand on the sub seconds resets. It's an f- ingenious little um, bit of engineering that, that I, you know, I, I really love that feature. And I've never, um, well, this is special to Panama, of course, but I've never uh, experienced anything like that. Um, so it's very actually quite functional as well. And, you know, if you're going to be cooking pasta, facendo un po' di pizza, qualcosa così, you know, you can actually use it to, to this is why the chefs are using it, right? Panerai, it's, it's one of those iconic designs that, well, there's nothing else like it. It's very much its own thing. You feel that heritage, you feel that link to its past. And of course, uh, well, it's a shame it's not made in Italy anymore, but, you know, the quality, it's unequivocally a luxury watch you definitely feel it it's the most (laughs) it's one of the most legible watches you could ever have also assisted obviously by its size Uh, but there's no mistaking and the loom as well it's absolutely fantastic I've really enjoyed my time with this particular model it has so many of the hallmarks of Panerai that that crown guard this cushion um, deco-esque case uh, the, the dial we've just talked about, the, this very wide strap, um, which I have to say that the strap is extremely comfortable for a bigger piece. I, it doesn't feel overpowering. So I guess we should get into negatives now as well. It's easy to, to get um, critical about its size. I'm not going to do that. Yes, it's too big for me. Obviously, I wish it was 38 millimeters, but you know, that's the whole 
it's part of the brand. It's, they were big before it was, um, it was trendy to be big. Interestingly, as we're talking about size, something I've read on forums is that the, the, the Panelisti actually criticized this for being too small. Uh, they actually said uh, it, it, it's a, a toy pan, right? I think that's kind of unfair. So you're probably wondering why I took down my Panerai video. And um, the truth is, is that Panerai, unfortunately, are a highly, highly faked watch. Because they're quite rudimentary, I'm, I'm obviously the, the, the quality and the polishing and everything, is, it's, you know, you feel it, you see it, um, it's undeniable. But there are a lot of fakes out there. And when I reviewed one, I, unfortunately, I wasn't sure if the watch I reviewed actually was the genuine article or not. So I played it safe. I took down that video and it's a shame because I really went into the whole history and everything. But hopefully this video will, will make up for it because obviously, you know, this has been certified, checked. It's it's from what the watch box uh, inventory, and you know, obviously, it's it's you don't have that risk when you're buying from somebody so reputable and trusted like Watchbox. But at the end of the day, we can't not. Um, address this elephant in the room that they are highly highly faked oh and um, before I forget actually there, there was a video watchbox did with uh, I think two guys from the sales team or sales floor J Jason and Josh a bit of a tongue uh, twist I apologize but yeah I'll leave a link to that video um, do check it out because I think it will help out a lot of you understand exactly what I mean there I think the biggest negative is it's 30 as water resistance. I know the Paneristi got up in arms when, when this uh, came out. That it's it's um, unequivocally uh, a bone of contention with a lot of people, especially considering its diving roots, and it's thirty meters water resistance. Ah, come on, you know Panerai. I wish I wish they would have made it a little bit more um, water resistant. I guess that's one for you to guys to discuss down in the comments. Let me know what you guys think. But anyway, um, I think we've uh, overstayed our welcome here a little bit. So I'm going to um, browse some more books and then um, head home. Oh God, so um, I think we're going to end it there because I mean, look how much stuff I bought. It's, it's ridiculous. Anyway, guys, I'm going to go home, eat, cook. Um, actually, I need to get some wine. So I'm going to get some wine. But anyway, I'll leave it there. Let me know your thoughts, queries, comments, opinions, all the rest of it down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it, found it useful. And as always, I will catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao. Now, before I go, guys, I just want to quickly tell you about this extremely cool app that Watchbox have launched. This is my own personal go-to app for everything watch-related. Using the app, you can keep track of the real-time value of your watch collection. You can store watches in your digital watch box and even try on watches using an augmented reality. So don't miss out and please go to the App Store and download it today. You can access all of my latest videos right there in the app itself. And if you haven't already, please follow me on the official Urban Gentry Instagram and of course the Facebook UGWC. But most importantly of all, keep it positive, onwards and upwards.